Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Friends, we want to welcome you to St. Timothy's uh, this morning. I, I pretty much know everybody in the room, or I've sort of seen you at least, most people in the room. Uh, for those of you who might not know, I am not Grady. <laughs> Grady didn't shrink, and uh, he's much better looking than I am. So, um, no, I'm the, I'm the interim rector for just for the summer. So I'm really happy to be here with you and to be worshiping together. Um, this morning, we get to publish for the third time the Bands of Marriage so this is the big one. Okay, this, is, this one goes, you are this means business now. So. Friends, I publish the bands of marriage between Bhakti James and Fuji Muni, and I bid your prayers on their behalf. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is the third time of asking. Okay. <laughs> it's good we're job. <laughs> Friends, I just want to remind you uh, this morning as we're sort of beginning our liturgy that um, you know throughout the history of the church, the gathering of God's people together is a sacred moment. And that doesn't mean that it's not joyful. It doesn't mean that it's it has to be somber, but it is sacred. And the reason why it's sacred is because it's not just a ritual, it's an encounter with Christ. And that encounter with Christ builds from the beginning of the liturgy right to the end. The climax of it, believe it or not, is not even my sermon. The climax, <laughs> I know, it's shocking, but the climax of the liturgy is the encounter with Christ in the Eucharist. We're here today to meet with Jesus and to point towards Jesus in everything that we do. And so as you come today, even if you've been going to church for 120 years like Peter, <laughs> friends, come with an expectant heart, realizing that you're going to be fed and encounter Christ, fed by and encounter Christ today. Amen. 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 Let's pray our collect purity. Almighty, Almighty God. God. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace and goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. 
Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat for our first reading. <clears throat> reading from the prophet Isaiah. And it shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. For the spirit would grow faint before me and the breath of life that I made. Because of the iniquity of his unjust gain, I was angry, I struck him. I hid my face and was angry, but he went on backsliding in the way of his own heart. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and his mourners, creating the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and to the near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet, and its waters toss up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> the psalm is taken from uh, Psalm 22. O oh, praise the Lord, you that fear him. Magnify him, all you seed of Jacob, and fear him, all you seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the low estate of the poor. He has not hidden his face from him, but when he called unto him, he heard him. My praise is of you in the great congregation. My vows will I perform in the sight of those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek after the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live there. All the ends of the world shall remember and be turned unto the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the peoples. All those who sleep in the earth, how shall they worship him? All those who go down in the dust, how shall they kneel before him? But my life shall be preserved in his sight, and my children shall worship him, and they shall tell the Lord to the generations to come. And to the people yet unborn shall they declare his righteousness, that he hath brought it to pass. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by, the, by him. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing, 
filling the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows in it into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. They went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Not many saw them going and recognized. Now many many of them saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. But he answered them, No, oh, sorry. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the grass. They sat down in groups by hundreds and fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of, and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Friends, may I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, today we have arrived at the narrative, the feeding of the 5,000. In my opinion, this text of Scripture is one that is so familiar to our eyes that we often struggle to recognize the strangeness of it, especially for those of you who have been going to church for longer than three weeks. <laughs> I mean, what is this really about? I've heard this text used to speak of God's provision, which of course it is, of miracles, which of course it is about that, of compassion, and it is about that, and also a few other things. I've also heard it preached in such a way as it makes it sound like it's about the power of Jesus to do tricks with food. Well, is it here to just show that Jesus is powerful? Is it just to sort of point to him as a miracle worker well maybe in some senses this could be correct but as you could tell by my tone here i think there's <laughs> probably something more going on but why is this passage placed here in the gospel of mark why does it come right after the narrative of jesus sending out his followers and then this narrative we spoke about last week of king herod King Herod's killing of John the Baptist. What's that all about? What are we supposed to be seeing by the, by the bumping up of these texts together? Well, let's keep these questions hovering over us as we unpack some stuff over the next 10 minutes, or at least you hope it's only going to be 10 minutes. <laughs> this means we'll probably have to look just a little bit at Herod again. So I talked last week about King Herod and John the Baptist, and that narrative gave us a glimpse of a somewhat self-appointed king. You may remember all the way back to last week's sermon. Remember that he was not actual, actually given the title of king, even though he asked for it. The emperor, the emperor didn't give him that title, so he's a, he's a bit of a self-appointed king. He also was ruled by his lusts and passions which is evidenced by marrying his brother's wife, which was an adulterous move, and by being aroused by a dance performed by his stepdaughter. Folks, this is X-rated stuff. Just read the Bible. <laughs> you don't need to watch some of those films. It's all right here. Consequently, with bravado, he offers up half of his kingdom to, this, to his stepdaughter who had given this lustful dance for them. In addition to this, even though he was convinced in the holiness and the righteousness and the innocence of John the Baptist, he gets himself into a position where if he doesn't kill him, he will look stupid in front of his guests. And as we talked about last week, he's got small man syndrome, and there is nothing that would horrify him more than looking stupid in front of his guests. So in the midst of this lustful banquet, John's head is served up on a platter, which gives us the image of Herod feasting on the heads of his innocent people, people of whom he considers himself to be their king. He's a crooked and depraved leader who is not loving and protecting his people, but devouring them for his own good. So this is the kind of leadership that Israel is under at this time. Herod was this kind of king for the Jews. To understand what's going on here, though, before we head to our passage today, which I'm actually only going to touch on just briefly at the end, I need to take you back in time to a passage by one of the prophets, the prophet Ezekiel. And as I know, like I said last week, you've all got your Bibles on you, and so you'll be flipping to this. In Ezekiel chapter 34, we find a passage of Scripture that gives us some context of why 
these passages would be paired together. By the passage of Herod, king of the Jews, and Jesus feeding the 5,000 would be put, pulled up against each other today. And if you look at Ezekiel chapter 34, the heading of this text says, Prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. So Ezekiel the prophet is going to prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Now the image of a shepherd was, call, was a common one in the ancient Near East for leaders or for kings. So if you wanted to speak about your leader, you could talk about, you could use the word shepherd as a metaphor. In this passage, Ezekiel paints a picture of self-serving shepherds who have not done their job to protect the sheep. Beginning in verse 2, it says, and please listen to this closely. This is good stuff. This is worth your tithe right here. <laughs> it says this, Ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not the shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food of all the wild beasts. The prophet goes on to say, As I live, declares the Lord, surely because my sheep have become prey, and my sheep have become the food for all the wild beasts, since there is no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. So the prophet paints this picture of self-serving leadership that feeds itself and has turned its own people into the prey, into the food for wild beasts. Friends, don't forget the image of John the Baptist's head being served up on a platter in the banquet of his own king. Because of the failure of leadership, the sheep are being scattered and they're in need of rescue, Ezekiel says. And the question that emerges from Ezekiel's text is, well, what is God going to do to rescue his sheep? How will God fix this? Verse 11 of Ezekiel's prophecy, it says, For thus says the Lord, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all the places. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and I will gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in the inhabited places of the country. And I will feed them with good pasture on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There shall they lie down in a good grazing land and on a rich pasture. They shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself, this is verse 15, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. This is a prophecy over and against the false kings of Israel. So the answer to this problem of self-serving Leaders that serve up the heads of innocent people on platters in the midst of their lust-filled banquets will be that God, will, God himself will come to be their shepherd. He will himself rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered 
because of the failure of leadership. He will feed them in green pastures on mountain heights. Now we can briefly return to our passage. In our passage, Jesus goes with his disciples, the leaders of this new kingdom movement, into an uninhabited place, the mountainside. The text tells us it's a green pasture. It's a green pasture. People begin to come from all the towns scattered around to seek out Jesus. When Jesus sees them, these people ruled by Herod, he has compassion on them because they are like sheep without a shepherd. Even in his tiredness, he spends time with them, teaching them. It begins to get late, and the disciples come to Jesus, and what do they say? Send them away to get some food. Send them away to get some food. Remember Ezekiel, in the back of your minds, as we, as we read these words. The disciples saying, send them away, someone else feed them. What does Jesus say? This is a really interesting statement. Sometimes if you just glance over this, you wonder why it's there. Is Jesus going, is he just setting up so that he can do food tricks? <laughs> is this just a brilliant setup? What does Jesus say? He says, you give them something to eat. Why does he say this? Because the kingdom movement that comes in and from Jesus feeds the sheep. It doesn't do what Herod did, what the corrupt leaders did, and feed themselves and send everybody else away hungry. Jesus, the leader of this new kingdom movement, feeds the sheep. And when the sheep are hungry, he takes care of them. We know that these corrupt shepherds, like Herod, did not feed the people. They left them hungry. Further, they feasted on the innocent. They feasted on the innocent. By Jesus deciding not to let these hungry people go out to find food for themselves, he establishes himself as the contrast to Herod. This is the king who will feed his people. Not like the Herodians who send them away hungry. Like Yahweh himself fed his people in the desert miraculously. You remember that story, right? Forty years. They're fed in the desert by, by Yahweh himself miraculously. Yahweh again will care for his people in the desert like a good shepherd. I was imagining this week what it must have been like. You know, as the Gospel of Mark is beginning to make its way around to some of those churches, persecuted people, suffering, reading these letters, totally identifying with the power of Herod to destroy lives of innocent people. And as they read these texts, and they can relate so deeply with that oppressive leadership, they then read the text about Jesus providing, sustaining, nurturing, and taking care of his people in the midst of a desert place. What resonance that would have had. I also was thinking about surely they could not help to hear the resonance of the, of the words where it says that Jesus blessed the food, he broke it, and he distributed it. There surely was resonance with the body and blood of the Eucharist, which was being practiced weekly in those early gatherings. And surely, as the text says, they ate and they were satisfied. These people would have been comforted by the fact that Herod will not serve up a satisfying meal, but Yahweh will meet us in the desert to provide for all of our needs, both now and for all eternity. 
They could not help but sense that even as they lived under persecution, that Christ was their miraculous provision, both now and forever. Gosh, what would it be like to read these words? So where have we journeyed today? Well, in this passage, we're introduced to Christ, the King. But more than this, to Yahweh himself, who is the ultimate good shepherd of his people and the fulfillment of the prophecy of Ezekiel. Yahweh himself has come to be the shepherd in the flesh, in and through Jesus. He's come to the rescue where other kings have failed to sustain and to nurture, Yahweh will provide what is needed. It is in him, it is him who will provide for us too on the journey of life. All other kings and kingdoms will feed themselves and leave us victims. They will serve up our heads on platters. Friends, the words that we should hear screaming to us from this text is, Come to Christ, who is the one who will not leave you spiritually starved, but will satisfy you both now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one one God, the the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, And we believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and the unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Foley, our Archbishop, Trevor and Charlie, our Bishops, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, especially praying for Father Grady and Father Ryan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, we pray for the Anglican Network Churches in Massachusetts, the Holy Trinity Southeast, Southeastern Mission Region, Attleborough, and Emmanuel Chinese in Boston. And also in our own community, we pray for Bridge, Bridge Community and Calvary Chapel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our church, St. Timothy's, 
We pray for our council. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for Linda Taunton and for Sharon Thompson. We pray for the table churches in Victoria. And we pray for, to give thanks for the gift of marriage and celebrate with Peter and Audrey their 50th wedding anniversary. And also pray for Fuji and Bakti as they prepare for their upcoming marriage next weekend. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. Prayers. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, especially for those in China, North Korea, the Middle East, South Asia, South Asia and Africa. We also pray for our loved ones and friends who are not walking with God and those who need the hope, peace and joy he offers. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. prayers. For our nation, for those in authority, for all in public service, especially for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Premier John Horgan, and also for all of those who are fighting forest fires in British Columbia, and those helping out in the, in the opioid crisis, and for those assisting in the ongoing vaccination effort. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. For though all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for Jim, Chris, and Amy, and for all those people who are dislocated and losing their homes during the present forest fire situation in BC. We also pray for all of Canada's indigenous community at this time. We also pray for the hundreds of children kidnapped and being held for ransom in Nigeria by extremists. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Your Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors ourselves. We are truly sorry and we can only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your soul. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. <laughs> Peace, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing, Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, O in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. 
Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We do not, do not presume to come to this with a table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of your table. But you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, take, take us away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Do you have any So Ryan is off on holidays for a couple of weeks, and uh, Joel Strecker from St. John's Vancouver is going to come and celebrate and preach for us, which is which is wonderful. Um, I'm not too sure if there's a pastoral emergency. I would assume that we could contact Chris. Who's Chris? And you can contact the bishop. I'm, you know, I would probably be our guest. So if there's some kind of emergency, but let's pray that there is no emergencies in the next couple of weeks. Um, let's pray there's no emergency period. Yeah. No emergency <laughs> period. Yeah. Yeah. And she has limited faith. <laughs> 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 Friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and re remain with you always. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God.